I'm Allison and this is Jim with Immersion Edge. Hi. <laughs> We're here today to talk to you about uh, immersion cooling and our immersion cooling technology uh, in a series that we're going to be putting together. So uh, Jim um, has a long history with immersion cooling technology and he is um, our Google of information. So he's <laughs> <laughs> Google knows everything. Yeah, right? that's right. No, and Jim, I don't know everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I don't know if immersion cooling is, is not new, obviously. It's been around since the 80s. Yeah, absolutely. But the density in equipment has made it now come into its own, is the it's point. made it more necessary yeah. mm -hmm. because it's too expensive to cool things these days. And with the new Cascade Lake 400 watt chips that have come out, the 9000 series chips that have come out, it's really hot. Mm -hmm. Really hot. <laughs> so with 100 kW density in one of our average tanks, you're, you're talking about a complete game changer. Absolutely, and with the advent of more and more bandwidth, we're able to take high density compute to the edge mm -hmm. because the bandwidth's out there. So that's what immersion cooling is all about and that's what immersion edge is all about. I don't think people realize that when you start breaking it down, you have a 90% less need for air conditioning. So that equates to 50% energy savings and that is huge and again not to use the same word again game-changing but when we're looking at energy efficient solutions then this comes right to the top immersion edge has finally came to a place where it's not just going to be a hypothetical situation where people are worried about the dielectric fluid and they're and they're worried about putting our equipment in it you know all those smaller little issues that people have had maybe in the past that, that goes away when you start talking 50 percent energy savings right there well at immersion edge we're using Midas Green Technologies XCI mm -hmm. and we use a synthetic hydrocarbon not a byproduct of oil manufacturing and mining we use synthetic hydrocarbon to cool the the fluids. It's much more uh, component compatible and user friendly. Put your finger I'm gonna in it. I'm going to put my finger in it. It's warm, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And this is 1,200 times better than air. Better at, than air. At dispersing heat. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so it just it feels very oil like, like it's something I might put on as, you know, at night before I go to bed on my face. Really, truly. Okay. This is actually a, a, a 12 rack unit tank that you can put 15 kilowatts in cooled by Crazy. water. And look how small this is. Look at yes. this right here. So again, we're talking about the potential for an edge data center solution. You're talking about um, micro data centers. The, the, where this plays is there's no need for raised floor. There's no need for a chemical agent fire suppression. Um, you're talking about, again, we already talked about 90% less need for air conditioning. So a lot of this application is going to be on the edge in a lot of these unmanned um, locations where the density is needed to get from, you know, to, to get all of our data closer. Plus, when you put your equipment in here, you're literally extending the life of the equipment, say 50%, because, um, you know, this is your most expensive asset in your data center, and you've now extended your life because you're now the components, um, are not being subjected to all the you know dust and the corrosion that they would in a, yeah in a traditional data center. So again, you're talking about extremely expensive equipment, and now you're extending the life of it 50 percent. So that is again another. Um, I also saw that that you know there is some that we have to make some minor modifications. One of which is to take the fan off. Right, we take the fans yeah, out. Take the fans out, but that. I, this funny little thing, a fan uses 20% of the energy required for that server. So you're, you're starting to start to cut away at all and chip away at all of these things and you know there's, there's just more and more and more reasons to look at immersion cooling technology. We've got OEMs already working with us mm -hmm. and that's for another, another time and maybe another conversation. But you know, there's absolutely no reason now to, to, to even not think about immersion cooling. Um, in fact, there's a lot of, of white papers, Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories just recently 
um, pub published one. It's pretty, pretty interesting when it comes to immersion cooling because we have already exceeded what traditional air conditioning can do. We're maxing out now and not, not even to mention the predictions that Gardner and, and all of the, the people say about where we're going to be with densities and what we're going to need when you start talking about you know, any kind of AI, um, any kind of, like we said, autonomous cars. But when you look at blockchain, which um, is a huge, it, you know, huge high dense, you know, situation, you know, it, you're almost going from possibility of something as a solution to the inevitability of this being one of the, in fact, it says one of the sole methods to cool. So, yeah. That's true. <laughs> well, thanks so much, and we will catch you again next time.